Good evening to everyone. It's good to see you here, and we're glad that we can be together. If you have your Bible with you, I'd like to encourage you to open it up to Leviticus chapter 4. Leviticus chapter 4. I know that many of you are well aware of the fact that we have several folks who are at camp this week, and so they are missed, but uh, we're glad that they're enjoying their time there. I hope they're doing okay in the rain. Um, but I was thinking it might be a blessing. It might be the only shower that some of those folks get this week. So uh, we hope that all's going well with them. Over the last several Wednesday evenings, we've been talking about the different kinds of offerings that God instructed Israel to give unto him. Now, these were voluntary ones. Uh, people did not have to do this, but they could do these things, and they would from time to time. They could offer what was called a burnt offering, and the whole animal was consumed, and this represented their complete commitment unto God. There was the meat or the meal offering that was a grain offering where they were giving thanks for what God had blessed them with and asking God to bless them in the work that they were doing. And then last week we talked about the the peace offering, which was an offering that could be celebrated with others, and it represented the fellowship that they enjoyed with God, the peace that they had with him. In Leviticus chapter 4, we read about another type of offering that they could make, and it was called the sin offering. And I imagine that when we think about the sacrifices that Israel made, the one that would stick in our mind the most is a, a sin offering. We learn in chapter 4 that this was an offering that could be made when someone understood that they had sinned out of, out of ignorance. The King James Version says, the NIV says, unintentionally. And the idea is that these were sins that were committed because of carelessness, or because of oversight, or maybe just because of human weakness. And so when someone sinned in this manner, they could bring a sin offering. Now, I don't know about you, but the question that I had was, okay, that's what someone did if they sinned out of weakness. What if someone sinned just intentionally? What if somebody knew what God's law said, but went ahead and violated that law. Was there a sacrifice that they could make? And the quick answer is no, they could not. In fact, if you go over to Numbers chapter 15, and you look at verses 30 and 31, you'll see the fate that awaited the person that sinned intentionally. There the Bible says, But the soul that doth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord, and the soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he hath despised the word of the Lord, and hath broken his commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. And it goes on with the very next thing being spoken of as someone picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. Evidently, that person knew God's Sabbath restriction and did it anyway. And it cost that individual their life. And so if someone sinned with determination, uh, presumption, intentionally, there wasn't a sacrifice for sin under the old law. That person was to be cut off from the people. But here was this sin offering. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about this because Leviticus chapter 4 really tells us about the different kinds of sin offerings for different individuals. There was a prescription given for the high priest. He was different than everyone else. He was God's representative and he was to personify holiness. And so he's told what to do if he is offering a, a sin offering unto God. There's a prescription that's given 
for the whole congregation if they sinned unknowingly. And there's one that's given for someone who might be a ruler and, and for a common person as well. And you can read all of that in, in chapter 4. For the most part, what it involved was bringing in the animal, placing your hand upon its head, as we've seen in other sacrifices, slaying the animal, and then with this sacrifice, the fat would be burnt upon the altar. With the first couple, the high priest and for the congregation, they would take blood into the, the temple or the tabernacle sprinkle it seven times toward the veil and, and then place blood on their fingers and, and put it on the horns of the altar of incense. You didn't have to do that for uh, the ruler or for the individual. But then the remainder of the animal would be taken outside of the city to the ash heap and there it would be completely burnt. And so that was what they were to do. And the purpose of this, as you might imagine, since it's called a sin offering, was to receive atonement, the forgiveness of sins. And so we see these things talked about here in Leviticus chapter 4. And I can't help but think, when I consider this offering, about the purpose of the sacrifice of our Lord. If you'll turn with me over to Hebrews, we can look in chapter 10, and we can start at verse 4, and we can see what the writer of Hebrews tells us about the difference between the sacrifice of these animals and the sacrifice of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4 reads this way, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. And that will, of course, was to give himself is that perfect, once for all, all-time sacrifice for you and for me. What the blood of those bulls and goats, even offered as sin offerings, could never do, the blood of Christ can do for you and for me. And so when you think about the contrast between the old system and their sacrificing of animals and you think of the new covenant with the sacrifice of our savior we don't need to offer sin offerings anymore our lord's is a once for all time sacrifice so that you and i can stand justified before the lord and to be able to have the benefits of those that sacrifice that jesus made we must obey his will. We must put on Jesus in baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. And if that's your desire, we want to help you this evening. If you've taken that step, but perhaps have fallen away and need to come back, we want to pray with you and, and for you. So will you think about these things? And friend, if you need to respond, do that tonight as we stand and sing this good song.